Yep, you're going to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. I have begun recording training for the Cisco DevNet Associate. <laughs> I am so excited for this certification exam. When they made the announcement, I just about lost it because throughout my career, I've had just about every IT job there is. And two of my favorite things that I've done so far are creating apps, automating tasks with code, using applications and object-oriented programming languages, and network engineering. And for a long time, those two things felt very separated because network engineering has traditionally been on the command line, whereas other jobs, other tasks like systems engineering and systems administrators, well, they embraced automation with PowerShell full-heartedly. And I always kind of wondered why networking felt a little behind. And then, of course, when software-defined networking came around, it felt like that was a huge step in the right direction. But now we're diving into a whole new world with automation using Python, Ansible, Salt, Chef, Puppet, all of the different SDKs for all of the different vendors. And I'm just so incredibly excited that Cisco threw all of their weight behind this and gave us DevNet. Now, the Cisco DevNet Associate Exam is not a small exam. You're going to feel like, okay, I'm going to learn how to automate my network. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to learn automation tools. And in order to learn automation tools, I'm going to have to learn automation languages, like templating with Jinja, for example. And then really to get the hang of templating with Jinja, you're going to get into something like Python. And then all of this is going to be communicating over an API. So what's going to end up happening is you've got this exam with six modules or six domains is what I like to call them. And these six domains, well, they're not particularly small. We're going to be introducing all sorts of software fundamentals, not just learning JSON and Python, but you're also going to be learning XML, YAML, the MVC framework, different software development methods, and then getting deep into Git. This is some really amazing stuff. The APIs, you're going to learn the core functionalities with APIs, but then it goes way into APIs when you learn how Cisco's different platforms all use different APIs. For instance, one of the big things that is an exam topic is the difference between writing scripts that program directly on the device itself, this is right here, iOS, XE, and NXS, versus programming against a controller. Look up here, the Meraki DNA ACI, which is really APIC, you know what I mean? So you're going to be learning all of these different things on how to integrate and how to automate networks. And really, automation is going to be one of the key things that you can do. I mean, think about it. Could you imagine if you had a application that you wrote this automatically monitoring specific things in your network, maybe OSPF neighbor adjacencies or interface statuses or really any interface statistic, and it can then automatically react to any adverse condition with the code that you write. So for instance, if an interface goes down, we could roll everything over to a new interface and also adjust ACLs and QoS policies automatically, which is so, so cool. In fact, it makes sense to me to give you a little taste of what's really going to be coming in the DevNet exam. What we're going to be doing in our course is we're going to be using this tool to explore the different APIs in all of Cisco's platform. For instance, let's take an iOS device. I've got this environment already built out with variables and all sorts of things. In the course, I'm going to walk through all of the steps of how to set up this tool so that it just works. But we've got authorization, we've got specialized headers, the URL and the ports, everything is all set up so that now when I click send, I get a response back of all of the interfaces and their configurations and their statuses in a structured format back to me. So when I'm writing a program, I can pull out the little bits of info that are relevant to me and then make decisions on how the program should proceed. For instance, if an interface is down and it shouldn't be down, I could programmatically tell it to bring the interface back up. Or maybe right there, the negotiated duplex mode is full duplex. And if it weren't full duplex, it would have to be something else. We could then programmatically tell it to monitor these things and react to them automatically. 
So if you're a network engineer and you're getting started in this, you're going to feel like you've got a mountain to climb because you have to learn all of these software development principles, how to use APIs, and then how it works into all of the different Cisco platforms, which is really, really crazy. But on the flip side of it, if you're a software developer and you're trying to break into networking, you're going to have to learn a bunch of things like network fundamentals, the OSI stack, the difference between VLANs and IP addresses. And then right here, 6.8, you're going to have to learn how to troubleshoot things like NAT problems and, and the transport layer being blocked. So this is a huge exam and it's not too terribly surprising that CBT Nuggets is throwing all their weight behind it. We really want this course to be perfect. So we're still in the prepping and designing phases but I've already got my assignments rocking and rolling and I've started recording. So keep your eyes peeled on my blog or my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button right down there because I'll be making announcements here as courses and modules and skills and nuggets get released. But in the meantime, thanks for stopping by my channel and I'll see you in the next one.